Hey, this is George Mazzell, Super Magnet Man, back to go over Passage 5 with you. If we take a look at this, it says, density is defined as the mass of a substance divided by its volume. And they give you the formula, density equals mass divided by volume. Table 1 lists the phases and its density, in densities and in grams per cubic centimeter of various pure substances at 25 degrees C in one atmosphere of pressure. So when you look at this table, you see that you got a block here of the solids, a grouping of the liquids, and with the gases. They're not in an ascending order, but they're grouped together by their properties, okay? Figure one shows how the density of liquid water changes with temperature. And you see where it's at, and you see that it's at four degrees C, and it's about where it tops out. You just want to look on the left axis, which is your Y axis, says the density. Across the bottom is temperature. Notice your zero is in the middle. To the left is cold, it's frozen, it's solid. To the right is liquid, okay? Figure two shows how the density of solid water changes with temperature. Now that solid water is what we call ice. Okay, how does this density change? As we start at zero, the density increases. So if you start at zero, getting colder, zero degrees C is, is ice, and as we start getting it colder, 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 we see the density start to go up just for the scope of what they've given us here from zero to minus eight degrees C. Now we look at the questions. According to figure one, as the temperature of a liquid water decreases from 10 degrees C to zero degrees C, the density does what? You always want to get your orientation right. They said decreases from 10 to zero. So we come over here and put your finger on 10. You might even want to make a little arrow showing decreasing is going this way. Just something to remind you. Decrease is going this way. What's happening to temperature? Well, we see as we decrease, it goes up, then it comes back down. That would be increases, then decreases, which is D. Number 26. A student claimed that if the masses of one cubic centimeter of any solid and one cubic centimeter of any liquid are compared, the mass of the solid will be greater. Do the data in Table 1 support his claim? Well, right off the bat, we know this is a no because we know wood floats on top of water, and wood is a solid, water is a liquid. So it's not necessarily true that the density of the solid will be greater. Now, so we go to the two no's. Look at the first one, F. No, lead has a greater density than any of the liquids listed. Does lead have a greater density? No, we see lead's 11.34, but mercury is 13.59. So it can't be F, since it has to be one of the two no's, it has to be G. And G says, no, mercury has a higher density than any of the solids listed. That is correct. 27, which of the following hypotheses about the relationship between the temperature and the density of a solid is best supported by the data in figure two? As the temperature of a solid increases, the density of the solid does what? So all we have is this one solid chart up here in figure two. From zero to negative eight. We've got to get our minds straight now. Which one are we talking about? As the temperature of the solid increases. Oh, that means we go to the negative eight and work our way towards zero. So it's negative eight going to zero is increasing temperature. What's happening to density? It's decreasing. So as the temperature of the solid increases, the density of the solid decreases only with the data that we've got. All right, number 28. Equal amounts of ethyl ether, mercury, and water, which has a density of 0.9971 grams per cubic centimeter at 25 degrees C, are poured into a single beaker. Three distinct layers of liquid form in the beaker. Based on the data in Table 1, which of the following diagrams best represents the order from top to bottom of the liquids in the beaker? Okay. Well, you look, mercury's one of the ones on the list. Mercury's the heaviest. Mercury's going to be on bottom. So let's first go by narrowing this down by just looking at the ones that have mercury sitting on the bottom. That would be F and J. So now let's look at between ether and water. Which one is the heaviest? All right, well, if I look at ethyl ether over here, it has a density of 0.71. That means it's lighter than water, which has a 0.9971. So the water sits in the middle, the ethyl ether sits on top because it's the lightest. Answer is F. 29, according to figure one, 100 grams of water at four degrees C would fill exactly a container having which of the following volumes? Okay, now you remember the metric system. You have one gram of water occupies one cubic centimeter. You come down to your table here, and if you look at the four degrees C and you go up, you come across, that 1.4 zeros over here means that's the volume that it takes. If one gram of water takes 1.0000 cubic centimeters. So we go back to our chart. If we've got five, if we've got 100 grams of water, how much space is it going to fill? 100 cubic centimeters. That makes C the answer. That does it for 29. 
If you will look ahead, you've got passage six to do now. Set that stopwatch and get started. Passage six has six questions. You should take five minutes on it. Come back, we'll see you on that clip. Thanks.